It shouldn't be much of a surprise to anyone that as soon as virtual reality technology became mass marketable and affordable, it didn't take long for people to begin using it for things other than just playing games and having fun. We've seen over the years hundreds of applications for virtual reality technology outside of the realm of gaming, from training first responders how to handle life and death situations, training medical professionals, and informing and instructing the manufacturing and technological industries. So it only seems appropriate that eventually someone would integrate the two concepts together and make a weird sort of hybrid game where you can do things you might do in real life but makes it a bit more fun and accessible to the general public. For all intents and purposes, this is Car Mechanic Simulator VR. It basically combines the idea that you can learn how to work on cars and pairs it with a fun run your own shop type theme to make the player feel invested in the work that they're doing. Of course, conveniently, the game removes all of the most frustrating aspects of being a mechanic like losing nuts and bolts, trying to remove parts of a car that are stuck or rusted, the sweaty 115 degree days inside the shop where you can literally wring out the sweat from your own uniform by the end of the day. You know, those little details. Yeah, so little known fact, except for people who might have watched one of my previous videos, once upon a time, Gramsci was actually a professional mechanic. I use the term professional loosely, but I did it for a while. Went to school for several years to do it before doing it professionally full-time for about eight years. See, here's a picture of me in my Audi uniform. I think this was uh, four years ago or so at this point. Anyway, so... I had a particular interest in this game as a result of my past history with cars and being a mega gearhead outside of the work itself. Anyway, which I mean, <laughs> let's face it, what mechanic isn't? That's like literally why we started working on them in the first place, because we thought, you know, cars were freaking cool. And I'll say this, it mostly does the car mechanic thing in VR right. I say mostly because like I said, they removed a lot of extra steps for things and removed a lot of the more frustrating aspects of the work itself, obviously because who would want to do something that is just frustrating the entire time? And I get that. I was actually genuinely surprised by how accurate a lot of the stuff on the cars were. I mean, regarding just the general overall placement of things, making sure they were realistic and accurate to cars in real life, it wasn't perfect, but there were certainly less bolts and steps to doing things in real life. But again, accessibility, man, am I right? There has to be a game in there somewhere, or else how are the developers making money? And honestly, to someone who knows absolutely nothing about cars, this really would be a nice, affordable way to dip your feet into the shallow end of car repair and overall vehicle knowledge to begin having an understanding of how our modern day vehicles operate and perform some basic and even some more complicated repair procedures. Whether it's because you just wanna mess around on your own car and tune it up or are thinking about doing it professionally at some point, I could see it becoming an incredibly easy way to introduce yourself to the basics of it and in particular, to get familiar with the anatomy of different types of vehicles. Most developers don't use real world brands in any case for their video games because the brand licensing and usage for video games is usually just too damn expensive. It'll usually wind up crippling the game's budget before it even gets off the ground unless they're backed by a company with deep, deep pockets. So most of the cars in game are obvious off-brand versions of real world vehicles. For example, the very first car I did an oil change on in the tutorial was an Audi A3 or similar German vehicle that I'm assuming they were going for. And the second one I worked on appeared to be a much older, I think it was like 68, 69 Chevelle or similarly styled American Muscle Icon type car. I will admit there were some notable differences in the procedure for the oil change for the Audi compared to the Audi like vehicle in game. But admittedly, those are some details that only someone who had specialized in the brand would be aware of, so I will let it slide for the purposes of this video. It was a bit cathartic playing this after spending, wow, over a year now since I worked on any cars, basically. See, I got laid off at the end of June last year, so yeah, like a bit over a year. It felt weird, feeling like metaphorical tools in my hands again. It was actually... Uh, I mean, it was actually a lot of fun, honestly, primarily because I didn't have to worry about, you know, whole bosses 
disdain coworkers who think they know better than everyone else or service writers that don't do their fucking jobs. I know every mechanic former or current watching this video is probably laughing because they know exactly what I am talking about. Don't worry, friend. It isn't just your dealership or shop. It's the whole industry. <laughs> I know that I'm still going to have some tard leave a comment going, actually, the oil change procedure for an Audi A3, blah, blah, blah. Because for some reason, car guys always have this incessant need to think that their knowledge is the ultimate pinnacle of DIY know-how and make sure that everyone other than them is informed of how wrong they were. Especially, especially online. It's sort of like a school nurse when you were a kid, which is basically just a person who took a three-week class on emergency medicine, trying to explain that they know way more about myocardial infarctions to a highly trained heart surgeon. <laughs> but still, they try to make sure the world has experienced the benevolence of their imparted wisdom, despite being wrong, wrong, so very wrong. Anyhow, that was a long tangent. Apologies, but it needed to be said. I really could go on for hours about that stuff, and if it's a video you guys are really interested in, leave a comment in the comment section down below, and let me know if you want to hear the full story of my experiences as a mechanic. Or, you know, don't. You can also just tell me to f*** off, that's cool too. Actually, while you're at it, yeah, might as well just smack the like button while you're down there, right? I mean, you're already there, maybe just like subscribe and hit the notification bell too, it's super easy, you know, it's free, and... Hey, I'll, I'll give you a cookie if you do. I swear. Anyway, honestly, there's a lot of problems with Car Mechanic Simulator VR. A lot of stuff in game isn't explained very clearly. There isn't a lot of direction regarding what you're supposed to be doing. And the menus are honestly just hell to navigate. Nothing is organized in a user-friendly manner at all, and it can make certain aspects unnecessarily annoying to deal with. Additionally, some of the controls can be a bit awkward and janky at times, and it's a little concerning that simply removing the hood of a car can cause a 45 FPS dump in game and make walking around suddenly feel vomit inducing. I think a more appropriate name for this game would be Car Mechanic Sort of Simulator VR or I don't know, maybe Car Mechanic Light VR, because it does an excellent job of simulating a lot of aspects of stuff, but again, just find yourself losing a lot of those critical elements that are detrimental to the overall experience of doing real work on a real car. I still think the game could be an incredible tool for getting someone used to VR or trying to find an affordable way to try this for yourself, dip your toes, which reminds me, there is also a desktop version of the game. I haven't played it, so I don't know how it compares to the desktop version, but I can say it very much feels like they ported the desktop version to VR rather than making the VR game from scratch, which I think ultimately hurts the experience a bit. It's probably what led to the aforementioned janky controls and weird interactions. Overall, I would definitely try this game for yourself if you think it is right up your alley. My very first time playing, I put an easy three hours into the game without even thinking about it, so take with that what you will. Despite its problems, which honestly don't seem that big in the grand scheme of things, and don't seem like they would take too long to fix, but again, I'm not a developer, I had a really, really easy time getting into the game, getting immersed into my old profession, and getting used to turning some wrenches again. That's about all I got for you fine ladies and gents. I'm pretty sure I spent most of the video complaining about personal problems anyway, but Car Mechanic Simulator VR is a pretty simple, straightforward game. There's no real complicated mechanics or systems, you need to learn to jump right into it, and it doesn't really have a skill level requirement either, so pretty much anyone can play it as long as they have a VR headset. And with that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Once again, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, leave a comment, share this video, all that good stuff. I'm gonna get out of here, I got a head gasket job I gotta do. I love each and every one of you beautiful father muckers. Grimsy out. <laughs>